Nice and clean. Okay, everybody, let's get it started. California State University San Bernardino Land Acknowledgement. We recognize that California State University San Bernardino sits on the territory and ancestral land of the Seminole Band of Mission Indians, Uhave Atum. We recognize that every member of the California State University San Bernardino community has benefited and continues to benefit from the use and occupation of this land since institutions founding in 1965. Consistent with our values of community and diversity, we have a responsibility to acknowledge and make visible the university's relationship to Native peoples. By offering this land acknowledgement, we affirm Indigenous sovereignty and will work to hold California State University San Bernardino more accountable to the needs of American Indian and Indigenous peoples. Awesome. And so just to give you a quick snapshot of campus, this is something we've probably talked a little bit about before, but just in case, uh, we want to let you know that our university is represented by the Coyotes. That's our mascot, uh, Cody Coyote. Uh, our student population, though, is probably a little bit more what we're talking about, because in today's pr presentation, we're going to kind of relate everything to student life. So our student population is very nearly 21,000, and right now we're sitting on 442 beautiful acres of land, as you just saw in the video just before. Um, the 442 acres, for those of you who might not might need like a size comparison because maybe you've never been set foot on campus before. Take Disneyland, Downtown Disney, the hotel resort, and um, and the hotel, and actually combine all of that land and multiply it by two and a half. It's right about two and a half the times the size of all of that put together. So it's it's a very large piece of land, very open, and it's constantly developing. 1963, we opened, or 1965, we opened up with actually three buildings, and today we have. 51 buildings and we're just finishing off our latest which is the new student union which we'll get a chance to talk a little bit about in, in a little bit later so we're really excited to share that but also as a as an announcement we want to make sure that y'all are aware that we are open for applications right now as of october 1st and we will be open until december 15th uh, for for all of you to submit applications for all majors this is for fall of 22 no we are not open for spring uh for spring of 22 but we may be opening for spring of 23 we're not sure yet that's still up in the air it's all subject to change but keep keep a lookout and keep in contact with us if you want to know more about whether we're going to be opening for that uh campus culture and events so csusb and campus life here is actually pretty amazing and one of the things we love to talk about when we're talking about uh, what goes on at campus is all the different events now obviously since covid hit like we haven't had a chance to do a lot of the big live events that we're used to doing but uh we do um up until then, we had been doing concerts, Coyote Fests. We had lots of special guests. We've had Kevin Hart. We've had uh, Angela Johnson. We've had Gabriel Iglesias. We've had like video games live in the San Bernardino Symphony Orchestra come and play for us with that. Uh, we've had Snow Day. We do lots of different stuff on campus and we keep our students busy. And I'm sure when housing talks to you a little bit more about some of the activities that they do later on in the presentation, uh, definitely have a lot to look forward to when it comes to that. And it's not just the San Bernardino Dino campus. We have lots of events also at the PDC campus. And so whether or not you're choosing to come to San Bernardino, or if you're going to be studying with us in Palm Desert, it doesn't matter. There will be plenty of activity for you to take advantage of while you're on campus. And so we have things like movie nights, and I said, again, snow day, and homecoming at PDC, which in fact, um, well, we're having homecoming this week, and at the end of the uh, end of the week on Saturday, we're going to be having an actual presentation, admissions presentation, campus tour. We're doing an application workshop and we're doing all of that live alongside all of the activities of homecoming. So hope you can make it. If you're going to have a chance to do that, we're going to be doing our thing between three and five. But if you're interested in coming down uh, for all the festivities, you can come at any time. We'll look forward to seeing you there. When it comes to snow day, this is just one of those events where, you know, some students have actually never seen snow. And so it's a pretty neat opportunity for students to come on down, build yourself a snowman, right? You know, have a slide, get down there. You know, there's a little ramp. Sometimes people can do a little bit of that snowboarding action just to test it out, see if there's something they like and have a snowball fight if that's something you're more interested in. So it's definitely lots of cool things to do. But we also have concerts. We have big events like movie nights, like I told you about before, and this just 
kind of gives you a little bit of an idea, but some of our Coyote Fest is where you have like thousands of students on campus. They'll set up a carnival right in front of the library. They'll have food trucks lined up on either side. I love the In-N-Out personally, but, uh, but you know, they've got all kinds of different things that you can take advantage of there. And there's thousands of students and other people that show up, even non-students to enjoy all the festivities. We hope you can make it there when you're able to come. Now, another thing about campus is that it is quite cultured and there's lots of other little interesting things about the school. Like for example, the Robert Francis Fullerton Museum of Art, which is actually one of the only accredited museums at a university in the state of California. So this is just a, an actual gem that we have on our campus. And it actually is home to one of the largest collections of Egyptian art on the West Coast. So it's one of those things that every once in a while, you'll get to see King Tut himself right here on San Bernardino's campus. That's a pretty cool uh, little boast. But other things that we do in here is we host exhibits of uh, different types of art, including student works for them to get an opportunity to have their work displayed in an accredited museum. So that's pretty awesome as well. We also have an observatory on campus. And again, we're also one of the only universities that has an, an observatory actually on campus, okay? some A lot of universities have observatories, but usually they're off-site somewhere. Ours is right here in the San Bernardino Mountains, and what we're doing here is we've got an 18-inch and a 20-inch telescope, and they're actually studying uh, two things. Right now, the composition of uh, of asteroids and comets, and they're also studying the center of the galaxy, supermassive black holes, their nature, and 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 their composition. So that's pretty amazing uh, work that we have for students that are interested in that kind of thing for graduate school. Moving on to rec and wellness, and so one of the things that a lot that CSUSB takes uh, very seriously is your psychological well-being. And it's one of those things that I think is really important, especially nowadays. You know, we know that confusion, anxiety, and depression can run rampant and how that affects your performance as a student. And so we have a lot of opportunity for you to come in for free. Now, this is paid for by your student fees. So when you pay tuition here or you get financial aid that's paying tuition for you, don't worry. You don't have to take a dime out of your pocket for these types of services. You can see a counselor, you can see a psychologist, and if there's something that you're going to need that we don't have somebody trained here on campus for, uh, which we have a lot to offer with our with our psychological services uh, center, we have an actual building that just does uh, this for our students. But uh, if we don't have something on campus, we can uh, re actually recommend you out and and uh, get get some people that uh, can help you so there's lots of common concerns and issues and you can see those right here on the screen things like family concerns things like relationship concerns and romantic concerns friendship issues loneliness uh, loss of relationships or personal death or injury so trauma sexual assault all kinds of things that you could need help for we have counseling ready to go for you. But in addition to your mental well-being, we also want you to be physically well. And so for to that, we have our actually our own gym. And it's it's actually a fantastic gym. It's it's state of the art. We have actually this row of elliptical machines that was actually powering powering the entire building for a long time be, through regular human use. But besides just training at the gym, we have actual personal training. So you can hook up with one of our students and just get an opportunity to get trained, get get into that fitness program that you've been wanting to do, if you just want to shave off a few pounds, if you just want to feel more energy in life or just feel a little bit healthier, that's always a great goal for a lot of us. We always wish, I, I always wish I had more energy in my day, right? But then also, in addition to that, we have aquatics, we have intramural sports, adventures. So like, if you notice some of the pictures down below, when we say adventure, we really mean it. Like we actually have student, oh, well, student run trips that uh, the staff takes students out in groups to do all sorts of different activities, including climbing, hiking, rafting, snowboarding, surfing, kayaking. We, they do all kinds of different things that you can do. There's a lot more than just what's listed here, but, uh, but it's definitely something to look forward to. So if you've ever been one of those people who's like, you know, I've always wanted to do this, but I've never really been brave enough to actually go out and do it because I don't want to go do this by myself. And none of my friends want to come do it with me. They all think I'm crazy. So, you know, this could be an opportunity for you to come in and, uh, and, and take advantage of one of these trips and go make some new friends and try out new things. Just have a little adventure all your own. We do have a 34 foot rock climbing wall on campus. So if you want, before you go out there and try to do it on your own, let's, uh, you know, you might want to train first on that, on that rock climbing wall. It is in the gym. And again, it's free to climb for our students. And we have a leadership challenge, uh, 
a leadership challenge course, actually. And if you look at the upper left-hand side of the screen over here, um, you'll see that there's some people standing on some rope-looking structure. Uh, that's that's part of the ropes course that we do here. Now, it's it's accessible, but you need to do it by appointment only. And it's, it's one of those things that sometimes you have to pay for. So it might be something you're interested in. It's definitely a challenging course. Our office has done it before. It's pretty fantastic. And the, the trainers there are there to guide you throughout the process. It's very safe. They've got you hooked up to the, to the uh, lines uh, as you're running through. So even if you fall, you're not going anywhere. Uh, but it's it's pretty awesome uh, challenge to get through. So if you've ever wanted to do something like that, we do have that on campus. One, so another thing that you're going to want to take a look at is our performing arts. We have a lot to offer when it comes to the performing arts on campus. And if you're a cultured individual and you just want to want to be able to take in some of the more um, so some of the more refined things that we have to offer on campus, I would say we have a lot of concerts through music, ensembles. I've actually posted here the music concert calendar for you for this year. So you can see what's left on the agenda to actually take advantage of. But we have things like the a full on symphony. Uh, we have percussion studios, opera. We have cello ensembles. We have choir. So there's lots of different ways to enjoy uh, the music here on Cal State San Bernardino and our students get to perform. And do you have to be a music major in order to join in on this? The answer is no. You don't have to be, if you know your, your instrument and you want to come in and just play with the rest of the student body here, as long as you try out ahead of time, there's no reason that you can't be a part of this as well. And so we have an amazing faculty and staff here. You can see one of them. She's actually a soprano, um, uh, an actual soprano, and she does opera shows all the time. And she's one of the professors here on campus to help our students reach their heights. Another part of the performing arts, though, is, of course, the theater. And so theater arts, our program here is pretty awesome. It's a little bit smaller, kind of focusing on acting on campus. So if that's something that you're interested in, but that also focuses a little bit on production, theater set development, like makeup design, costume design, uh, set design, all those different things, and including um, even being able to run like the show. So a lot of times they'll have people manage each of the shows. And this is just a, a, a huge heads up on what the schedule looks like for this upcoming year. So starting on November 12th, we'll have the House of Trials. We'll have the Teeny Tiny Puppet on December. And then starting next year, we'll have the Two Gentlemen of Verona and the Lucky Stiff. So those are productions that we'll be putting on. And those are just the big productions. We also have smaller productions that they put on in between all of these shows. So there's lots of uh, opportunity. If you're the type of person that just likes to go and see a show live, this is one of the cool things. And I used to have season tickets to this. It's pretty awesome uh, how, how awesome our students really are at this sort of thing. And they go off to do all kinds of stuff. Um, but including in student life, we have other things that I think is really important to bring up, including the new Santos Manuel Student Union. And this is where all, this is a huge student hub here at Cal State San Bernardino. And in fact, we just expanded. The new building is 120,000 square feet. It's no classrooms whatsoever. We're going to have a game lounge, an esports center. So that's going to be pretty cool. You'll probably catch me there for sure. Uh, we're going to have new gathering spaces. We just built out a new custom cosmic bowl alley. It's going to be legit. Um, the Office of Student Engagement is housed there. Uh, our, our clubs and organizations are housed there. ASIs uh, housed there. And we have lots of cultural centers um, there as well. Our tutoring center, writing center is going to be based in there. We're also going to have new food vendors that are going to be coming into this space, which is really cool, like The Habit and I think Panda Express are two of the ones that we know are confirmed to go in. So lots to look forward to there. But to talk to you more about some of the services, about ASI clubs and organizations and student engagement, I give you my partner in crime, Brandon Landrum. Thank you, Chris. I really appreciate the introduction. My name is Brandon Landrum once again, and I am uh, one of the admissions counselors uh, for the office. Uh, Chris, can you go to the next slide, please? So here is the Associate Students Incorporated, also known as ASI. And basically ASI serves to empower and advocate on the behalf of the students here at CSUSB. So they offer abundance of leadership opportunities, such as maybe you wanna join the board of directors. Uh, so for example, as Chris mentioned, the, um, the new student union, um, 
there was actually the board of directors that approved the budget of the $1.7 million project for that building. And then you also have uh, the ASI president uh, who actually oversees uh, all the student body and makes uh, big decisions for all the students. So all these positions are student led and you could actually uh, run for election for the student president. They have vice president. They also have other um, positions that you could run for as well. There are a lot of different student resources that you could uh, also go into. Um, they also have what's called club allocation budgeting, uh, which is also known as cap funding for all your clubs and organizations. Any club organization could apply for this and receive free funding up to, I believe, $5,000 uh, for their clubs and organizations once they have a club here on campus or if they join a club. All you have to do is just apply for that. And also, you get graphic design services, meaning that if you wanted any type of flyer to be uh, made, you could actually have it made uh, through the Office of the Associated Students Incorporated, and then it'll be back to you in a timely manner, and it'll be posted up on the website and also throughout the campus and then something that's um that's really unique is our asi legal clinic uh, not a lot of schools offer this but you can actually get free legal clinic a uh, free legal advice from a person that is a lawyer here on campus and um they'll be able to give you advice on like what to do what not to do and it's pretty awesome Next slide, please. And then we also do have our Office of Student Engagement. So this is where all the students are, are trying to find out how they can get involved. The Office of Student Engagement student engagement basically supports an inclusive student life environment by offering social and co-curricular opportunities that foster student involvement. So we have over 150 clubs and organizations here on campus, along with 23 different Greek life organizations. In the picture right here, you do see the Student African American Brotherhood, just one of the different uh, clubs here on campus. And this is uh, the club that's actually in Atlanta at uh, the National Conference. So there are different traveling opportunities you go into. And last but not least, we have our athletics program. So if you are interested in joining an athletics uh, team uh, here at CSUSB, we are NCAA Division II, and then we all have a total of 10 sports. We have four sports for men and six sports for women. Those sports are for men, men's basketball, baseball, soccer, and golf. And then for women's, we have women's basketball, softball, soccer, cross country, track and field, and volleyball and not to mention we are the national champions of 2019 for our volleyball team who had a perfect record of 33 and 0 which is amazing and then if you wanted to try out or be recruited for any of the sports teams here at CSUSB you most certainly can just make sure that you get in uh get in contact with the coaches or the athletic director oh with that being said, that's the conclusion of our presentation. We're going to go ahead and pass it over to the Office of Housing, and they're going to go ahead and, and talk about their wonderful uh, building and also what you can do to get involved in housing. So I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to John. Thanks, Brandon and Chris. We really appreciate uh, the opportunity to talk about um, housing and residential education here at CSUSB. I'm going to share my screen here. Um, we've got some um, slides that we want to share with you all. Um, so again, my name is John Merchant, and um, we're going to go through some of the things that we think are important for you as you're thinking about CSUSB and the opportunity to live on campus. Um, we only have on-campus housing on the San Bernardino campus. Um, there's not housing at the Palm Desert campus at this point in time. Um, whoops. So um, what are some reasons why we encourage folks to consider living on campus? Um, what are those things that are, are salient to the student experience? One, obviously it's easy access to campus and resources. Um, you're right here, you're able to go to class readily, you're able to go to an on-campus job real easily, you're able to access the dining hall and to participate in all those great things that um, Brandon and Chris shared about the campus experience. Many of our events that we sponsor in the residence halls are free. Um, actually, all the events are free uh, so that you have the opportunity to participate in those, connect with other residents, and get to know people who live in our villages. Um, we do have student leaders, so resident assistants and academic mentors um, who are continuing or upper division students, so um, sophomores, juniors, seniors, um, who are helpful in terms of guiding your uh, on-campus living 
Um, they're great resources. They help with programming. They provide safety and security in our residence halls. And they're excellent student leaders and role models um, for those of those, those students who live on campus. Um, Holly's gonna talk a little bit more about this in the future, um, but we have residence hall association and, and village councils, which are engagement opportunities, as well as living learning communities. Um, folks who live on campus typically have stronger academic success. Um, so higher GPAs and graduate in a shorter amount of time. Safety and security is really important. So we have 24 hour security in our residence halls. Um, everything is card access. So people have to have a, a card or a fob to be able to access the building and the residence hall room. And probably one of the biggest things in Southern California is if you live on campus, um, you don't have a commute. You don't have to worry about being late for class or uh, the cost of gas. Um, you can buy a parking permit through parking services and um, park your car on campus if you have a vehicle. You don't have to worry about the commute to and from each day uh, to, to campus. So I'm gonna share a little bit about the villages that we currently have offered on campus. So we currently have three villages. Uh, Coyote Village is a traditional style building. So that essentially means that students live in rooms um, on floors or wings and that they're shared community bathrooms. Um, this village is really intended to be for first year CSUSB students to provide some of that traditional college experience of engaging with neighbors and with lots of community spaces. Um, because students do not have access to individual kitchens in these spaces, students in Coyote Village are required to have a meal plan, um, but students do have access to lots of other amenities in the building. There's a larger community kitchen and game room um, and lots of spaces for students to study and connect uh, within the community. Next one. Our other two communities, our villages, are Arrowhead Village and University Village. They're both apartment style and they are intended for sophomores through graduate students. Um, so any continuing or transfer CSUSB students can live in these apartment buildings. Um, depending upon the apartment type, we have a variety of apartment types. Um, there will be two to four students per apartment. Um, we have a few um, minimal uh, studios available, but most apartments will have two to four students. Uh, students will have their individual bedroom space. Um, they'll have a shared bathroom with one other person. Um, they'll have a living room and kitchen that's a shared space as well. So all of our apartments are going to apartment set up with living room and kitchen. Um, students can opt into a meal plan for these villages if they'd like to. Um, and we do have students who do that in, in the case that they don't want to make dinner all the time or want to grab lunch between classes. Um, but because, again, there's kitchen access in these spaces, those meal plans are optional. Oftentimes people wonder what's included in rent. Um, obviously we are different than apartments or properties that are off campus. Um, so your rent, if you're living on campus, includes water and sewer, um, electricity and gas, trash removal, Wi-Fi, and standard furniture. Um, so you wouldn't have to worry about any of those additional bills um, or bringing in a bed or a couch. Um, all of those things are included in the, in the cost of our rent. Um, what's not included is laundry. Um, so we have laundry areas within each of the villages. Um, a wash is a dollar, a dry is 75 cents. Um, your resident parking permits. So if you do have a vehicle and you want to park on campus, um, that does not in, that's not included in your rent. And neither is the meal plan cost that Holly just talked about. Um, those are not included in what we charge for our rent costs. But everything else is included. Um, so when you're looking at costs and you know, having to set up your own um, electricity or your own gas uh, if you're in an apartment, um, working with the trash company, all of those things are, are already included. So you don't have to worry. And as first year students, transfer students, continuing students, um, we want to take some of that burden away from our students so that it's very easy to live on campus. They don't have to be stressed with some of the things that would happen on an off campus property. Um, right now, due to COVID-19, um, we are not able to offer in-person tours. Um, so if you're curious about what Coyote Village looks like or Arrowhead Village, um, University Village, we do have virtual tours available through our webpage. Um, so if you go to www.csusb.edu backslash housing um, and go to the Getting Started page, you'll be able to find the link for our virtual tours and that will be able to show rooms, um, common areas, laundry rooms, 
you'll get a good idea of what the space actually looks like in our villages. So one of the things that John mentioned earlier in the slides and benefits of living on campus is access to living and learning communities. So every one of our communities is a space where you literally live and hopefully you're also learning right to college environment. But we have some very specific uh, themed communities that either are based around um, a shared uh, topic or area of study or an identity experience that's really intended to support the development and the success of our residents. So each LLC is unique and you have a chance to live with others who either share that interest or that major or that identity and a chance to interact with faculty, staff, peers and departments who work with us as partners on that LLC to get kind of this, this elevated experience um, within that learning community. So these are really fantastic opportunities for our residents. We get a lot of positive feedback um, about from students about their experience within LLCs. Um, it really creates an opportunity for students to have um, great relationships with other students, to have these deeper conversations and engagement around again topics or areas that are um, you know, important and critical to, to students in those communities. So some more examples from this year. Uh, we have Be Well Yotes as a community focused on uh, wellness specifically, our Black Residential Scholars community um, for uh, students who identify as Black to be able to connect within our community. We have our Latinx Residential Scholars for students uh, who again identify in the Latinx community to connect with each other. Um, residential Honors Scholars, which for this Residential Honors Scholars, you do have to be part of the University Honors Program to participate in that LLC. Uh, we have a transfer LLC for any of our transfer students. You could be a new transfer student or a continuing transfer student uh, to participate in that LLC. And Women in Science and Engineering. Um, so this year, one of the new offerings that we we're excited about is our folks in Residential Honors Scholars um, took some cohort classes. Um, we do have a couple LLCs we're excited to bring back um, next year when we have a higher density amount of students on campus and we have some cohort courses as well. So keep, it, keep your ears open this year as we move towards next year for us to share some of our new offerings um, or a couple new living learning community offerings uh, in general. But we have opportunities both for new students in all of these areas, as well as continuing students and transfer students who want to participate in these communities. Um, and again, it offers great opportunities to connect with um, you know, faculty and staff. We have some mentorship programs that we've just kicked off, which is really exciting. Um, the pictures that are on the screen now are from some of the uh, trips that our learning communities took pre-COVID um, to engage within the greater um, IE or Southern California community around um, topics that are important. So whether it was going to the, um, the Science Museum or going to the African American History Museum or Latinx went to Alvera Street and learned about the history of the community there in Los Angeles. There's great opportunities that are unique to LLCs um, that you won't get just living on campus in general. So yeah, so we'll announce our communities uh, later this year for 22, 23, which we're excited about. So keep your ears open for that. Um, the other thing is you, you, for LLC students, but also for all of our students, regardless if they choose to live in one of those specialized communities, we have a lot of opportunities for engagement. So we have programming and events. You know, this year we're offering both virtual and in-person programming options for students. Um, so I know that there was at least one event um, for folks to engage virtually online to play games together and to do some friendship building. We did some Jackbox games with folks. And we've also done in-person programs again, with COVID safety measurements in place for folks. Um, but one of the pictures up there is from a uh, karaoke night that was hosted early on in the academic year, giving students a chance to engage in the masked singer, as we called it, again, the safe, safe karaoke in the, in, for the group. Uh, we have a number of traditions within the community um, that happen kind of each year around things like holidays or special celebration opportunities. So students can attend any of these programs or as many of these programs as they want. Um, we have large scale for everybody and each individual community may also have smaller events or programs just for folks living in that floor or that wing to get to know each other as well. So there's a lot of great opportunities um, for programming. The other opportunity we have for engagement that's great is involvement in our residence halls association. So earlier um, you heard folks speak about ASI, uh, the student government for, for CSUSB. RHA is um, the student government for housing. So they are elected leaders within housing and they serve as the voice of students. They provide community building as well. And their goal again is to do advocacy, leadership development and programming for our community. So getting involved in RHA is an opportunity for students and a great leadership opportunity. Um, we also have village councils within RHA. So each village has its own um, council that students can run for um, positions 
uh, to again, be leaders within their specific village. Um, there's a lot of great opportunities there in. So the funny little picture on the side with those little, those weird little clothespins, those are all little coyote clothespins um, that RHA and Village Council made this year um, for one of the uh, virtual conferences that they are attending. So we'll exchange pins with other schools, get a chance to engage with students um, within our region uh, around different ideas um, and just get to know and network with other people. So you know, there's a lot of cool opportunities, including engagement with other uh, university students across our region and across the world through RHA and Village Council. So um, we take safety and security really seriously in housing, especially with the pandemic. Um, so right now, um, and obviously with COVID-19, things continually change and evolve. Um, as of right now, um, all students who live in housing have to complete the self-certification that's required um, for all students on campus. Um, and what that means is that folks have to be vaccinated or they have to have an exemption, um, either a religious or a medical exemption to be allowed to live in the residence halls. Those folks that are exempted have to be tested weekly um, for COVID-19. Now, again, things can change as COVID is very fluid. Um, we don't know what things will look like for next year, um, but we do anticipate that the vaccine being important for folks uh, attending CSUSB and also living in housing. Uh, face coverings are re required, so we want people to know that um, that will likely continue into the future, um, as well as com completing a daily health screening. Um, our custodial staff clean touch points and surfaces um, that are shared on a regular basis. And a lot of our planning around COVID-19 and the future of the pandemic will be shared in the summer before people move in so that we have a better idea of where we're at in terms of um, numbers and conditions around uh, the illness. One thing that we likely will continue to do is staggered move-in so that people will make appointment times when they move into the residence halls. Um, and Co Coyote, uh, the Coyote Commons, Yodi Eats will likely also have some um, safety precautions in place for where the dining hall is located. But we do take safety and security really important um, seriously. We want people to know that that's important to us as they're looking at living on campus and in community spaces. So speaking of uh, going to the commons and eating spaces, we want to share just a little bit about meal plans. So again, housing, we do not directly kind of run the meal, the meal service. We work within a fantastic partner on campus, Yui Eats. Um, so again, they provide a whole variety of meal plans and options, both at the all-you-can-eat dining hall um, and also at different uh, locations across campus. Um, so again, just to kind of clarify the expectations if you live in housing around a meal plan, Coyote Village residents, residents again in that traditional style building, um, must purchase a meal plan. So they get to pick from the residential meal plans um, that would fit their individual dining needs. So there are a variety of costs um, based on how many meals someone wants and how many dining dollars someone wants within their plan. And again, Arrowhead University Village residents could purchase voluntary meal plans. Um, so they would buy those directly through the website, through the Eats. Um, faculty and staff can buy them too. I, I have my own meal plan to give me some flexibility. Um, there's also options that have just dining dollars. So you can choose ones that have meal swipes. So we can go and exchange a swipe for all you can eat or dining dollars so that if you're gonna, you know, say purchase something across campus at one of the, the eateries where it's an at cost and you can spend those, those dining dollars, um, which is really qu quite a great deal because if you buy a dining dollar plan, um, often you get a certain amount of dining dollars added for free. So if you're going to buy food on campus at some point and spend cash anyways, you might as well get a few extra dollars um, towards by buying the meal plan. So we have the, the website up there for dining on campus. Again, we encourage folks to take a look at the options. I go to East as a newer partner to campus, um, and they've been really fantastic, and they work really well with students around um, dietary needs and take student feedback. Um, and they're, so they're really great partners. Um, things that we really want to emphasize in terms of uh, your potential interest in living on campus is we want folks to apply early. Um, the 22-23 on-campus housing application will go live on Tuesday, February 1st, uh, 2022. And that's really important to know because we typically make assignments based on application submission date and space availability. This past year, um, we did have lower density housing uh, space, but we had high demand. 
So we maintained a wait list um, throughout the summer and actually had to close the application in July because we had so many people apply that we weren't able to house everybody. So we really want folks, if they're interested in living on campus, uh, to apply early. Um, our rent rates for the 22-23 academic year will be released on February 1st. Um, all the information that we have about learning communities um, and different housing options will also be shared on February 1st. Um, so that's just an important date. The earlier you apply, the more likely it is that you're going to get a space. Um, one thing that we also want to know is that on-campus housing is not guaranteed. Um, so you're not guaranteed to get a space on campus. Um, but again, if you apply early, um, the likelihood of getting a space is a lot greater than, uh, than not. There's no application fee for applying. Um, you do have to have CSUSB credentials to access the housing portal from our website. Um, and when you are offered an assignment, there is a $100 non-refundable prepayment that you need to submit to lock into that space. And uh, that $100 actually goes to your fall rent cost. Um, so just know that that's our plan is apply early, um, no application fee. Um, once you are uh, offered an assignment, there's a $100 prepayment um, that locks you into the space and that $100 goes to your fall semester rent. A few things to think about um, just related to financing your housing. If you're thinking, you know, this sounds like something I'm excited about. What might this look like and cost? Um, just some logistics kind of behind the scenes. Rent charges are posted once per semester. So it's not like a, a monthly rate that you pay on that monthly ongoing basis. Um, and again, it's not going to fluctuate or change based on things like your utilities use um, and other items that if you're living off campus might adjust. So once per semester, and again, we'll post those rates for next year. February 1st, um, but you will know well well in advance uh, what those rates and what that, what that rent would look like. Um, we encourage everyone, whether you end up on home or not, please apply for financial aid, submit your FAFSA. Um, this is really important for you to get aid and support um, just in general uh, for on campus, um, but including for, for covering housing, knowing what your aid um, options may look like will help you determine if you can cover uh, your you know, costs to also do your on campus living experience. You expect to receive your cost letter if you submit your FAFSA early uh, in spring of 2022. Um, don't assume that a financial aid package will cover all of your costs. So take a look at your actual details of your package to see what that costs in terms of tuition um, or other op or other aspects such as housing. Um, you know, you can work with student financial services around how you make payment as well, and then they have options in terms of a payment plan. Um, if you are not really looking at being able to pay for everything kind of upfront in one payment, they do work with students. Something else to consider is on-campus employment as well. Um, studies show that students that work um, a minimal amount of hours, you know, 10 to 20, uh, 10 to 20 hours uh, per week um, in on-campus jobs uh, have really great impact in terms of their engagement on campus and their GPAs, um, plus their ability to connect and get to know faculty or staff or mentorship. So we really encourage folks to consider the range of on-campus employment, right? You may be eligible for a federal work study um, that may show in your award letter, or if you if it does not, you are welcome to go back and ask financial aid if federal work study is something that you could have be eligible for. Um, so you have positions on campus that are open to federal work study um, students. There are also student wage positions available on campus in offices. So whether it is you know, potentially working um, you know, as an assistant in an office or being a student mentor on campus, there's a whole lot of different positions. Um, and campus offices in general, they want to be successful as a student. They want to support, you know, support you in your endeavors as a student and provide you this extra opportunity, um, again, to not only make some money, but also get some real professional experience, which is really fantastic. So, again, I encourage you now to start thinking about and planning for you know, what would your budgeting look like for your university experience and including considering what on-campus rent may look like for next year. Again, you've got time now and planning can make a big difference in um, how you manage that and um, kind of how you move forward successfully throughout your, your university experience. Those are the uh, slides that we have for today. Um, I know that there's been some questions in the chat. Um, but we're happy to entertain any additional questions that folks may have or anything else that's um, coming through. Uh, we also have, um, this is our information, the, 
The link I know was in the chat for virtual tours, but there it is again, um, if you're interested in taking a virtual tour of housing. Um, there's our email address, our website, and our social media handles. Um, we are on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, and we're happy to connect with folks outside of this presentation. Our website is probably the best resource for you to get current and up-to-date information. Um, we really want to drive folks to our website to see when the application goes live, what residence halls are available, what living learning communities are going to be open for the 22-23 year, what the rates are. We get a bazillion questions from folks about how much it costs to live on campus, and we have a great rates page that will break it down by village um, and direct you to the meal plan pages that also have costs associated with those. So um, please use our webpage as a great tool for information. Um, the folks over in the admissions office are also great resources, uh, but we definitely are, are happy to entertain questions, um, but want folks to know that our 22-23 um, timeline and application launch of February 1st is really when things will go live um, for our upcoming school year. Thank you both so much for all of that wonderful information on housing, on RHA, on rates and rent and, and uh, just some of the activities that we can do and, and take advantage of in our, in our housing department. So thank you both for being here to do that. Uh, this is the time where you all get to ask questions. And uh, uh, one, uh, we have an interesting question in here. I don't know if uh, this is or us or not, but is there an LLC for entrepreneurship? And I'm going to say, well, you can be an entrepreneur and create an LLC. I'm not sure what the... Uh... I think they're asking if there's a living learning community for entrepreneurship majors. Yes. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> so so the, the short answer is we have had an LLC for entrepreneurship called Upstarters. Um, this current year, we did not, based on our housing numbers, we did not have... Um, enough students to make that truly a strong, viable living room community. But we do have a partnership with the entrepreneurship program um, and we are hoping to, to bring that one back. So again, we'll share LLCs for next year when we get a little bit closer and have kind of solidified all those locations and everything. Um, but yes, in the past, you've seen that name. You probably have, have seen that, you know, posters or events or things that we have done with them in the past. And we, you know, keep an eye out. We're hoping to bring that back. Awesome. Thank you for that. I totally goofed. I had no idea we called it the LLC. <laughs> right on. Okay. I got to get current with all the acronyms, you know? So any other questions? We want to entertain all of your questions and they could be about housing. They could be about admissions. They could be about college in general. Really, we're not going to limit you in this. And we did get another one from an anonymous person that says, is it hard to get into your nursing school? Yeah. Yeah. It is. Uh, bottom line, it's probably the most impact. It is the most impacted major on campus, and it does require quite a bit. Uh, minimum 3.5 GPA. You're looking for all the prereqs, including microbiology, chemistry, organic chemistry. We're looking for anatomy and physiology, English, math, oral communications, and critical thinking. All of those classes, you need to get A's in them in order to be competitive, because realistically, if you don't have a, at least a 3.7 in those prerequisite GPAs, it's going to be hard to be eligible. You're going to need to take the T's test. 70% uh, passing minimum score. I'd recommend that starts awarding you points towards nursing admissions would be 80%. Uh, any 84% uh, and above is recommended if you want to, because that seems to be about the average of students that are walking through the door. Uh, you're also going to want to speak a second language, ideally. So uh, if you, at least if you've taken the first couple of classes in a language, you can show your working knowledge of that. Uh, we can get you extra points for that. Uh, letters of recommendation, a character reference, and a um, you know professor reference, an academic reference, and a character reference, both uh, uh, we just need two of those for a little extra points. And then we also have info sessions that we're offering uh, for our students in the nursing program, which are mandatory, by the way. Uh, and so all of that must be complete. Now, there's two applications for that one going on right now from October 1st to December 15th. And then another one which opens up, I believe, um, I'm not sure exactly if it opens up what when in uh, December or if it opens up in November, but it will close January 15th. So that is the nursing application. So there is two, just know that you're going to have to apply to both and put separate uh, documents and, and, uh, and admissions requirements. You're gonna have to send those off to both locations. Uh, is it tough? Yeah, we, the reason it becomes so competitive though, 
is not because you're not all worthy students of being in nursing. It's just we only have 50 seats available for getting students into the nursing program. Uh, it's not because we don't want a larger nursing program. It's mostly because we need we're, we're limited to the amount that hospitals will allow us to put you into those hospitals to do your clinicals. So we're limited by the space availability for that. And that's what determines our class size each time that we admit. And it's a three-year program. So definitely, uh, yes, it's definitely tough, but that's going to be true for a lot of universities. I still encourage you to apply because like I tell all nursing students, definitely to apply as many nursing programs as you possibly can to see who will take you and then go uh, with the best options for you from there. First, I just want to jump in real quick too, just to share our, I put in the chat our nursing website and um, it is a two-step for um, application process like Chris mentioned. So general admissions application deadline is December 15th. And if you're applying for, as a transfer student and all your prereqs are going to be done at the end of spring 2022, the application process for the supplemental application for nursing is January 3rd through February 4th, my birthday. So I just want to make sure um, I remember it is my birthday. That's the only reason why I remember that deadline. Um, but it's really important to know what you're getting into with it. Um, and I do recommend to come to another session. We are, and I put our highlights, or I'm sorry, our outreach website, our future Yotes. Actually, if you are interested in applying to one of our five impacted majors, we have five nursing, social work, psychology, criminal justice, and kinesiology, allied health. If you are applying for fall 2022 and you are interested in one of those five impacted majors, next Tuesday, our application workshop will, meet, will be focusing specifically for those impacted majors. So please um, you know, come back. We have a lot of sessions where we're gonna talk more in detail about our impacted majors and requirements but super important to know what you're getting yourself into. And um, if you miss a session um, for CSUSB highlights, like what we're doing today, or our Cal State Apply workshops, we do have the recordings available. So hopefully that will be helpful. And then you'll have other opportunities to connect with us as well. Thank you, Lucia. We do have another question coming in from anonymous attendee that says, when an incoming freshman 22 to 23 is applying right now, what's the process of admission? Do I, I have already sent in my Cal State application. So I, I wanna know what I should be working on as far as documents I might need to send in. Brandon, would you like to handle that? Absolutely, I could talk about that. So uh, application you're gonna get in from October 1st to December 15th. So the next order of business that you wanna do is make sure that you, um, Turning your transcripts by February and by February only if we request them from you. If not, then uh, you'll uh, receive a decision uh, as early as December or as late as April 1. Um, and that's when we send out our decisions between December and April. And then what you want to do is uh, if this is a school that you want to go to, you'll pay your confirmation deposit fee of $100 by no later than May 1st. And then from there, you're going to want to make sure that you uh, turn in your final transcript once you graduate from your high school or if you're coming from a community college that you turn in your final transcript from there with uh, showing that your units and your final grades on there. And then uh, the most important thing, you can go through the whole process, but you have to make sure that you register for your orientation. Uh, so orientation is mandatory. You must register for it in order to register for any classes uh, here on campus at CSUSB. So that's the order of business. Lucia also did put a, a next steps link in the chat. So you definitely want to check that when you get a moment. Thank you, Brandon. Thank you, Chris. Any other questions that we have? I haven't seen a whole lot of them at the moment. We'll just wait a couple of minutes in case somebody might have one. But if we don't, we might end this a little bit earlier than anticipated. <laughs> Anonymous attendee asks, I'm an undocumented student and I'm currently prioritizing Cal State Long Beach as my transfer school since it's close to where I live. However, I am considering Cal State San Bernardino. My question is, if I get accepted into CSUSB, will I receive financial aid for both housing and the meal plan? Good question.
Um, financial aid can be applied to both the uh, to both housing and, and a meal plan. Um, specifically, as a transfer student, you're likely to be assigned to our one of our apartment communities. Um, so that would be Arrowhead Village or University Village. Those meal plans there are voluntary, and those are purchased specifically through Yodi Eats. Um, the, I know they're working right now to see if financial aid can be covered with the meal plan, but those are not required. Um, those are just optional plans um, for those facilities. But again, each package is going to look different, and we really encourage folks to work directly with student financial aid to see what their award is and how they can apply that um, for housing, for, for a meal plan, um, for their other needs on campus. But each student is going to have a different package and a different um, award based on their FAFSA, for the submission of their FAFSA. Uh, another anonymous attendee asks, what does FAFSA cover? Does it cover tuition and housing? And I believe Brandon was already tackling that question. Yeah, so financial aid for FAFSA, it depends on the, the amount that you have. It could qualify for, uh, it will qualify for your tuition, but also if you're requesting that you want to live in housing, uh, it could give you an amount for housing. It all depends on what you want. And then there's also other ways of financial aid. So you have loans, um, you also have scholarship, work study. Um, so if you do want to get an on-campus job, you want to definitely check that box for work study. Um, but for more more information about that, I would recommend talking to the financial aid office and they could assist you on filling out your FAFSA application. So, so the reality is the FAFSA is just the application for to be eligible for federal aid, right? So what you get is going to be specific based on what the content is that you include in the FAFSA. So just to be clear, like again, that could look very different based on your specific scenario. Um, and then, but we ask folks to all encourage folks to fill it out because again, knowing that for all students, again, whether you live in housing or not, being eligible for federal aid is, is really a great thing to have in your corner. Um, so again, that package will look different for everyone, but really encourage everyone to, to do that. Um, I saw a question on the best housing for transfer student, in our opinion. Um, honestly, there is not like a best housing. It's really, what is the fit for you? Because one student may say, you know, I love living, you know, we have, my example would be University Village. I love living across the street because it feels like it's like a little bit away. I like crossing the street. I like having a balcony. Another student may say, I love living in this other community because um, it's close to this thing that I like. It's closer to the rec center. Um, I like the apartment layout a little bit differently. So I would say it's kind of like everything. It's about fit. So think about what would you be hoping for from your housing experience? Um, you know, what kinds of things would be important to you? You know, take a look at the different, um, you know, layouts of apartments and take a look at some of those virtual tours to get an idea what amenities are available. Um, and also look at things like LLCs, right? Would you want to be involved in a more um, kind of targeted experience of a community or not. Um, so I think there's all these different factors that play into what's going to be a best fit. We have students who could sit in the same space and say, I love doing this and I hate doing this, right? It's true for everyone. Everyone likes, likes and wants different things. So I'm um, encourage you to look at the information and, you know, ask questions about different communities to figure out what that best fit might be uh, for you. Great answer. And, you know, I do want to add a little bit on top of this, because especially when it comes to financial aid, you should be aware that financial aid goes to cover the cost of attendance first. So it will go to tuition and fees usually first. And then if you have money to cover housing, that will, um, you can apply it towards that. Absolutely. But uh, one of the things that I think is a great resource for students, if you're concerned about how much you might be eligible for, um, let's take a look. I, I would like to show you uh, a little resource that you can use. And so just sharing my screen really quick, if you're navigating from csusb.edu, you can go ahead and click that little, well, I didn't show it very much, but this little three line look hamburger looking icon here at the upper right hand corner, you click that, you drop down to the admissions column, all the way down to the financial aid and scholarships, you click that link. And if you go to the parents uh, tab at the top blue here, click it, and then you're going to have to mouse away from it because it, it tends to cover up the content. But uh, once you see, you'll see a net price calculator here. The, the, the thing you're going to want to know about this ca uh, calculator is that if you put your specific information in, it can help calculate, one, what the total cost of living will be while, or the estimated total cost of living that would be uh, on campus at Cal State San Bernardino, and 
uh, what you might qualify qualify for in grant aid. Now, I think you can get as much as twenty three thousand dollars a year in total aid. But for grants, it'll tell you that's the money that you don't have to give back, right? You can go ahead and fill this out really quick, and it should give you an idea of what you personally might be uh, qualified for. So I thought I'd just throw that out there as a resource in case that might help you kind of figure out, weigh your options when it comes to uh, housing. Any other questions that you may have, please put them in the question and answer, please and we'll be sure to answer your questions. When's the next live session? <laughs> it's a good question. Let's take a look. It is. October 26th for a presentation and October 19th for a Cal State Apply workshop. So if you all want to see that, I can go ahead and share the screen like Lucia did a moment ago uh, when she was showing you this same website. Here it is. Uh, October 26th is going to be the next highlights presentation. That's where financial aid and scholarships will be here directly. And you can ask them all of those pesky financial aid questions because I know y'all have them out there. And then also looking at the, the Tuesday, the 19th, we'll have another application workshop, both for upper division transfers and for first year students. Uh, so you can register for that right here. And uh, that'll be the next ones that we'll have available for you. And then uh, to answer the question, how competitive our scholarship drive? When does scholar when does the scholarship drive open? Um, so usually scholarships aren't available until you are a student here at CSUSB, but there are over a hundred scholarships that you could apply for. Um, so what I would recommend is definitely uh, registering for the next available session when financial aid is here, and they'll be able to tell you when the scholarship. Uh, portal does open so you can apply for the scholarships uh, once you become a student at CSUSB. Any other questions? All right, we're coming down to the wire here. Any last minute questions y'all wondering about? Now's the time. <laughs> the final countdown. <laughs> All right. I don't think we're getting any more. So with that in mind, I first just want to thank housing again for being here to back us up in the admissions team. You guys are fantastic. Um, and also to thank the admissions team for being here to help us present today and if they help answer all the questions. I hope that this was helpful for all of you. We hope that you're staying safe and staying healthy out there. We hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and we'll look forward to seeing you at the next one. Go Yotes!